On September 7, 2010, a seemingly small incident in the middle of the East China Sea changed the course of history. A Chinese fishing trawler and two Japanese Coast Guard ships collided in the disputed waters. The Japanese Coast Guard detained the skipper. Tensions between the two countries had been rising all year, and the Chinese government was far from happy. It cancelled high-level political meetings with Japanese officials, and it reportedly reduced exports of crucial rare earth elements to Japan. China has denied this has happened, and it's unclear by how much they reduced their exports. But what is clear is that this small event marked the start of an incredible price surge and a worldwide frenzy to secure these rare earth elements. Arguably the most important of them being this, neodymium. A weird little element that will power our future. Neodymium is hidden all the way down here in the periodic system. It's one of the 17 rare earth elements, which are actually not that rare at all. These metals were first considered rare because they had never been seen before. But rare earths like neodymium are quite abundant in the earth's crust. It's just very hard to separate them from the material around them. When it was discovered in 1885 by this Austrian scientist, nobody really knew what to do with it. From the 1920s onward, it was used to color glass purple. Fancy, but still not very useful. But in 1983, researchers from General Motors and the Japanese conglomerate Sumitomo independently announced a huge invention at the same conference. If you combine neodymium together with boron and iron, you'd get really, really strong magnets. Wow. Today, neodymium itself is also used in special protective glass and for lasers, among other things. But the magnet is what turned out to be a game changer. This is a regular ferrite magnet, probably what's in your normal fridge magnet. I mean, they're super easy to separate, no problem. This is what's called a super magnet. And they are super strong. Oh my God. I swear to God, I'm not that weak. Oh, okay. Neodymium magnets can be up to 10 times stronger than ferrite magnets. Normally, the magnetization of iron breaks up into lots of little domains pointing in different directions. This is Michael Coey, a professor who has been researching magnets for over 50 years. We don't want that to happen, to have a good use, usable permanent magnet. We want them all to be in the same direction. And the way you do that is alloying the iron with another element, which is neodymium, which is the best one for this purpose. That makes these neodymium magnets crucial for things like electric cars, wind turbines, or even your phone. So a quick refresher why we need magnets for these things in the first place. So I'm making the simplest electric motor from these magnets, a battery, and some copper wire. First, you need to put this battery on top of these magnets. Like so, and then you need to form your copper in a type of spool. So these neodymium magnets are already creating a really strong magnetic field. And this battery is our energy source. The top of this copper spool needs to touch the battery and the bottom part needs to touch the magnet so that the electricity can flow through. And it spins! And this happens because of a principle called the Lorentz force. You may remember it from high school. This is how we convert electrical energy into mechanical energy. So this is the basic principle of how an electric motor works. And that's what we use also for our electric cars. The same principle goes for wind turbines, just the other way around. This mechanical energy is then turned into electrical energy through the magnet inside here and the copper spool. So in the bigger versions of these, instead of the LED being lit up, that electric energy that is generated gets fed into the grid. So the stronger the magnet, the better. And these neodymium magnets are the strongest commercial magnets on the market. They're also relatively cheap and super hard to demagnetize. The invention of neodymium magnets paved the way for more efficient electric motors. They are more compact and lighter because these magnets are so powerful that even comparatively small ones get the job done. Today, many electric cars contain an average of about a kilogram of neodymium magnets. 
Wind turbines use much, much more, up to half a ton per turbine. These magnets are also really important in audio equipment like these headphones or big speakers. Inside these broken headphones, there still should be some magnets, so let's dig in. Whoop. Oh, that was easy. In these headphones, you have a copper spool and a magnet. The electricity is converted into movement, which then is converted into audio waves. In the case of your phone, there is a tiny magnet in here, and that causes the phone to vibrate. But most of the neodymium worldwide is going to be used for electric cars and wind turbines that are popping up everywhere. This is why demand for neodymium is only projected to grow and could outstrip supply. But let's rewind back to that boat incident for a minute. It wasn't just Japan that panicked a little when they realized how dependent they had become on rare earths mined in China. The price of neodymium shot up dramatically after the collision. It's all born out of this, this fear from the, the, the concentration that you, you raised in the, the 2010s with China. This is Michelle Bustamante. She looks at critical minerals and their impacts on land and natural resources. I have seen the concerns around these types of materials uh, lead a lot of countries to become more resource like nationalist and uh, isolationist and want to mine all of our own stuff and uh, only you know, produce everything um, domestically. Australia, where rare earths are relatively abundant, has scaled up its production significantly. The US reopened its one rare earth mine in 2017. Myanmar has scaled up its mining, but exports a lot of its rare earths to China. India wants to quadruple its domestic production in the coming decade. But scaling up neodymium production is still far from easy. The problem is getting this element out of the earth. Neodymium is found jumbled together with other similar rare earth elements. Purifying it takes a lot of steps. That process uses many acids and solvents that are detrimental to the environment and hazardous to workers. Not only that... One of the unique challenges associated with rare earth mining often is uh, that they're mixed up. A lot of the ore is mixed up with highly radioactive elements. That's why even 10 years after the rare earth crisis, China is still the main producer of these elements. And neodymium, along with other rare earth elements, has been a hot topic during recent trade tensions. And prices are starting to surge again. The problem is that these neodymium magnets are so great that it's really hard to replace them. Now people have tried to find other ones, other combinations of iron with different rare earths, and some of them have been somewhat successful, but nothing as good as needing them. All these details about the metallurgy are much, much trickier. What does work, though, is using less of it more efficiently, for example, in electric motors. We found that, yes, you could actually replace 50% of neodymium with ferrite magnet without compromising in performance. This is Ikena Nlebedim. He is a chemist developing new methods to recycle and substitute neodymium magnets. So, is a matter of alternatives and substitution, but not re entire replacement. Recycling always seems like the most obvious solution, but we're in the very early stages still. In personal electronics, these magnets are small and hard to retrieve because they're built in with other materials, making it easier to just use new neodymium. But since the wind turbine and electric car markets are also expected to keep on growing, it could incentivize more recycling. And since the magnets used there are bigger, it could be more cost effective. I can tell you that we are making very good progress. Our approach is to recover these rare earth elements in an environmentally friendly way using a process we call the acid-free dissolution process. With this method, there is no need to pre-sort and separate out rare earth magnets one by one. Instead of toxic acids, the process uses copper salt and selectively leaches out rare earths. And these are examples of rare earth elements that we recovered from these. It would make it even easier if manufacturers already built their products with recycling in mind. When we create truly sustainable supply chains, 
uh, that involve a high degree of reuse recycling, that's when we're really going to solve the problems that create all of this fear. Not just by trying to mine everything ourselves as individual nation. So it's unlikely that this obscure element is going out of fashion anytime soon. Did you know about super magnets and neodymium? Please let us know in the comments and subscribe. We post videos like this every Friday.